of the most iconic voices in golf are back to save the day and ready to entertain in their newly weekly video podcast, Costas and McCord, Off Their Rockers. Yes, we're back. This is Costas and McCord, Off Their Rockers. Mike Abram, your co-host, producer, producer from the Golf Agency, and so glad to be here today trying to get to the bottom of what is going on in the world of golf. It seems like it's never ending to figure out what's happening. Now with the SSG investment into the PGA Tour, how does that affect the tour? How does that affect live in the PGA Tour? And what is it gonna do for the world of golf? With Peter, with Gary today, they're gonna break it down. When you like, subscribe, and share this YouTube channel and podcast with your golfing buddies, we'd love to hear from you. And we love the support that you give to our sponsors, Swing You and the amazing Swing You app, the best app in golf. Go to swingyou.com and use promo code ROCKERS2024 to get 40% off your first year of Swing You Plus or Pro. Foresight Sports and their Quad Pro and Quad Max launch monitor, number one on the PGA Tour, incredible technology, as well as their simulators, which are cutting edge. Lab Golf and their game-changing technology with the tour-winning Lab Golf putters. Check out labgolf.com for more information. And Bono's Barbecue with smoked meat, sauces, and an incredible franchise opportunity. Check it out at bonosbarbecue.com slash franchise. Let's get right into it today. Peter, Gary. So much chaos going on in the world of golf. We've got this new wrinkle, this new twist with the SSD investing money in the PGA Tour. What does that mean for the tour? What does that mean for the players? And what does that mean with Liv? Are we going to get the best players in the world playing together more or not? Peter, what say you? So my first question is, yeah. how many emergency podcasts do we have to have before it's no longer an emergency? It's just the new norm. I mean, it's like every time we turn around, there's something new that's chaotic and changing and, and like the golf world is upside down. Right. We kind of lost our uh, plot as far as <laughs> golf. Golf. Let's hit a shot. Wow, that was a nice shot. You're playing well. No, no, no. We have to go through the business, the maniacal business part of it. Every week, it seems like something's coming up. So take it. Peter, what do you think? Uh, what's going on? We got a big infusion of cash through SSG. Uh, uh, just, a, just, just a quick recap. We had uh, Piff and Live Golf was no bueno, per Jay Monahan. They're evil. We're not going to do anything with them. June sixth, uh, changed my mind. We're going to we're going to merge somehow. We don't know how, but it'll be done by December, which didn't happen. Now it's going to be done by the Masters, which probably won't happen. Who knows? And in the meantime, they go out and they and they get a group of uh, billionaires, SSG, uh, to come in, commit to a a billion and a half dollars initially possibly another billion and a half dollars if certain uh, things are met, certain criteria. And they valued the PGA Tour at $12 billion, which that in and of itself is a podcast, but whatever. <laughs> um, and so now, by going to SSG, the PGA Tour thinks they've financially strengthened their position for their players. But oh, by the way, you still have Yasser and Piff and Liv over here on the other side. And I can't imagine that they're really happy about this occurrence. I'm I, right now. I'm I'm studying the heck out of acronyms because <laughs> it's PGA, it's Live, it's PIF, it's SSG. What? <laughs> pretty soon, pretty soon, just going to put them in the washer and see what comes out. <laughs> uh, but it, yeah, it's it's a uh, uh, in the in the overall scheme of things, um, the Saudis want to play. They want to play golf. They want to insert themselves into a vertical integration of this business model by their way in. Um, we are trying to fend that off. Um, we being the PGA. We being the PGA, another acronym, PGA Tour. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I mean, it gets down to the point that we're 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 trying to to not get in a pissing contest. <laughs> with somebody that could buy us out tomorrow what's in his left front pocket, okay? 
Number one, you're not going to win that deal, and I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking about the uh, uh, the PIF fund run by Yasser, 700 billion, or 12 billion, you yeah. said something like that. We get one billion in revenues. We are minuscule, the PGA Tour, minuscule, and we're trying to fight these guys that are huge. You can see what they're doing. They're buying. They're buying. They're buying. They're going to try to buy their way in. I think this whole thing, a lot of this revolves around the fact that. The Saudis now, the, another acronym, the DOJ, Department of Justice, they're going to look as soon as, if we went with them, right away, what's going to happen? If we, if we go to, to the PIF and Yasser, the Saudis, what happens? They're going to sit back and go, wait a minute, hold it. We're yeah, going to take a long look. Yeah, but that's, that was premeditated by the tour going to their, their lobbyists and saying, uh, is there any way that you can you can prevent this from happening, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't the whole thing isn't kosher. It isn't above board, right. right? And there's there's enough people that don't like the Saudis in this deal, up in Congress and in oh. the Senate are going to go, <clears throat> well, not so fast. And by the way, again, <laughs> deep get deep into this, there's a good chance we would lose our 501 C6. Sure. That that is that is a charitable tour that we run, nonprofit, and if they took that away, we'd be like, I think baseball lost it in 2007, the NFL lost it in 2015. They were the same way, and they lost it. So all of our tournaments, if they did that, like we're here in Scottsdale, the Phoenix Open is next week, that would be a franchise bought by somebody here in town, probably Thunderbirds. They operate it independently. They invite who they want to play in it. They operate it independently. That's kind of how the scenario would go, which gets really interesting because now you've lost all concept of unity when you've got, for, there's 46, 46 tournaments for the year, right? Now all of a sudden you've got 46 different entities running it how they want. How, how, um, what have we got, 46 tournaments now? 46. How many of those are, I don't even know if this is a word, franchisable? I mean, how, how many of those would somebody really, and what do they have to pay for the right to the franchise? Yeah, and I think my conspiracy theory is that's exactly why the, why the, uh, um, the, um, the strategic sports uh, group, SSG, is involved. They do things for profit. They're all billionaires. They understand that. They run what? They run franchises. I just think that around this whole thing is this whole okay. shift. There's going to be a dynamic shift. What prevents shift. Yasser and Piff from coming in and buying up the franchise? Yeah, they could. They could, could buy one, two, five. They could buy any of them. <laughs> why, I mean, why didn't they buy the DP tour? It, it doesn't seem like it's made it any clearer. We know that. No, it's just... You guys are members at Whisper Rock. Whisper Rock has dozens of PGA Tour members, DP members, lit now live members as well. What do you hear on the range? What do you hear in the grill room from these tour, without disclosing names, but what do you hear from the tour members about what the heck's going on the last couple of days? There's, uh, um, okay, let's go over this simply. 1968, the PGA Tour was part of the PGA of America, mm -hmm. two different deals. And the boys broke off in 1968 and formed their own tour of players. That was <clears throat> a situation that existed. Um, there were 60 guys exempt in this deal, so it was, it was a very close market, a very capitalistic market, of small. And then in 1983, the all-exempt tour came and it Thanks expanded. To yeah. Expanded out to 125, more guys available to make money, so forth. Now, with Liv coming in and 48 guys playing, and all of a sudden we had to show more power, top players playing everywhere, they've reduced it now to the top 50, or exempt to all the big tournaments and everything else. Yeah. So we've gone back now to capitalism, socialism under the uh, all exempt tour back. Okay, so there's been a juxtaposition. And when you do that, those guys from 51 on, that are sitting there looking at the tour going, wait, wait a minute, let me do the math here. To get in the top 50, there's eight tournaments played for 20 million and more, and I'm playing for seven million, okay? Mm -hmm. How am I gonna get into that top 50? Boy, you better play your ass off to do that. So now you've got the guys at the end of the food chain going, wait, 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 what about us? Yeah. 
And that's, that's what I hear a lot at The Rock from those guys that are at that end of the food chain. In fact, they've, they've already signed a, uh, a letter to, the, to mm. the tour going, we want more information, uh, guys from anywhere from it. I think it's 131 on the money list down. Yeah, I, I wouldn't What's be a bit surprised on? if they don't unionize. But That's the next move. Also, yeah. also what I'm hearing with this latest move, the investment of the one and a half billion dollars. Yeah. Yasser put out a very thoughtful, well-scripted statement about growing the game of golf and, and whatnot. That, that's the public um, uh, presentation that he wanted to make. My sources say that, however, he is not happy with this. And the comment was something to the effect of, okay, if they want to play this way, it's going to be John Rahm times 10. Mm -hmm. Times yes. 10. So now I year. ask you, now I ask you, we've seen Rory make a, a 180 degree change in his thinking about this whole situation. Commissioner, kind of the same thing. And, and so now, what happens if, if by some stretch of the imagination, Yasha picks off Rory, or he picks off Scotty Scheffler, or he picks off another half a dozen of the PGA Tour's best people. The players are their product. The tour has two products, their players and the quality of their TV production to the viewers. And we know that they don't give a shit about the quality of the TV production. They, they're like, mm, you're a viewer, the hell with you. I don't care. We're going to put commercials on. You're going to take it. You're going to like it. If you don't like it, don't watch. I don't care. Right? Yep. And so now, if they don't, if they don't have, if they lose, 25 of the top 50 players in the world, what's left? And what's the value going to be for SSG? I mean, these guys are smart guys. John Henry runs it, who not only has run the Red Sox successfully. He was a Chelsea. smart guy. He was a smart guy. He's got the Red Sox DFL the last two years. Uh -oh. so, Red so Sox fan. So I'm, I'm, I'm withholding Just judgment on John Henry right Red now. Fan and here. Tom Warner and the whole Red Sox organization. <clears throat> hmm. So anyway, that's another story. Brought to you by Peter sorry, Cossus, sorry about that, you. folks. Yeah, thank you. But there's so much going on with, with that. You would think there's got to be some plan that we're not hearing about, that there's a reason they're investing this. There's a reason. Do they want does ssg want the money from piff the money from the saudis to come into tour does that help them what's your opinion on that well if it's for profit which mm -hmm. they're in that's what they do and for this a is, living this P, and it's called pga tour enterprise right that is yeah, the for profit another, it's a for profit entity and, and the way the original deal was set up the pga tour what is a non-profit mm -hmm. okay and then they were going to give the rights in this in this um, uh, merger, if you want to call it, with, um, with the Saudis and PIF, that contract said all it was was you guys do what you do for profit, PIF, but PIF gets the first right of refusal for any business deal comes to the PGA Tour. Okay. Any business deal, they get right of first refusal. You don't go to somebody else, you go to them first, contractually. Yeah. And they say yes or no into this deal. They operate separately. They would operate their tours separately, everything else. But there would be there would be some kind of merger in the business plan. And the business plan now seems I keep hearing for profit. Mm -hmm. SSG, for profit. Okay. Those guys have made their living and they're billionaires yeah. because they're the for profit. Mm -hmm. I can't think of any other reason Unless it goes, the tour goes to franchisees. Mm. I mean, that's if they have this grand plan where you now own a franchise. I ask, I had a tournament director. Mm -hmm. um, we sat down the other day uh, with some boys that have, have talked to uh, and do business with, with uh, uh, MBS. And... Um, and I asked him about it, and his company was big on the tour, huge. And asked him all these questions about it. I said, if you right now were offered a franchise to buy in the city your company is in, mm -hmm. would you do it? And he said, yes, no question. Okay. 
So now you could take these. But for how much and, and no, no, for that's, how long? That all and, seems to be. It's, it's not that. You're going to, obviously, that's going to be negotiated, right? Yeah. And it's going to be a nego There's so many things that are involved with that. But the, well, what's the TV you know, package? You know what this is? You know, you know this, I, this is it, mass it, chaos. It just, it just came to me. It was San Antonio. Yeah. yeah. Several years back. I, I believe it was Kevin Na. Kevin Na, the one that made 16. Yes. In that hole? Yes. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, par five. So yeah. he hit a... He got he lost hit a, in the woods. He, got, he hit a tee shot in the shit. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, at that point, mm -hmm. he had a decision to make. Mm-hmm. Get out. Do I do I going? do I go back to the tee, take my penalty, and hit another one, and, and get on with my life, or do I not? Mm -hmm. He elected not to, mm -hmm. and he hit it more in the shit, mm -hmm. and more in the shit. And 16 shots later, he holds out. He's out of the tournament, right? And that's exactly what I feel like about this whole thing, is that they had this point in time where they could have gone back to the tee, reteed it, and and played out from there, and had a much lower score than a 16. Mm -hmm. But now, no, they're, now they're in the middle of this. They're, they're, they're taking drops. They're hitting balls. They're, they're whatever. They're, it's unplayable lie after unplayable lie. Every time we come on, it's an unplayable lie. Something new, something different, something weird. We talked on the last show about, uh, I asked the question, should Jay Monahan be fired? I'm going to frame it differently now that we know a little bit more. We still don't know much. But... Is Jay Monahan closer to resurrecting his commissionership or being fired after what just happened with SSG the last few days? Well, I, I'm, my opinion, I, there's too much chaos right now for any any sanity to reign in this whole deal. I mean, all of a sudden you fire in the middle of this deal. I think he's going to last. I think he's got to be real tired. He's already he's already taken a leave of absence for True. whatever. Yeah. Uh, then the COVID, and then dealing with this and everything else. If, if it's me, okay, boys, I'm out of here. I'm done with this. Uh, he's got a group coming in that if you want to find somebody to run it, to, to look in that group, SSG. Just look, look at that group. They've done it. They've been there. They've done it on the highest stage. Um, I, I, and I, that, that's my opinion. I, I, don't, I, I don't think he can get back the players. I think the players are... are, are yeah, you could see already when they added Tiger to the yeah. deal. Yeah. And we've always had in the board, there's always been four player directors and four independent guys and then the commissioner. OK, mm -hmm. now we've got more players and another guy. So it's five. So it's gone to the player side as far as the votes concerned. We have more representation than anything else. I think the players know they want to get more in control of this deal, which then begs the question, they got the big boys coming in. It's no longer, hey, what do you think we do, uh, I, I, uh, Tiger? I, what do you think we do? Uh, you cannot uh, have the inmates running the asylum. That is not going to work. Well, I'm this sorry. other this other way didn't it's, work, and the other guys were running it. And I tell you what's going to happen is, <clears throat> I think, look, Monahan may see this through to some conclusion, whatever that may be, but he doesn't last, in my opinion. And, and because the disgruntled players from you know, 131 to 200 or whatever number you yep. come up with, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're going to ask for a full disclosure of finances and whatever. And they're going to find out the tour has been paying less than 40%, 39, roughly 39% of their total income, TV income, whatever, to the players. And the players are their product. They're their capital, they're their product, and that they've been getting 39%. And by any stretch of the imagination, it should never, ever be less than 50%, but probably closer to 60 or 65%. And when those players that are trying to unionize find out that Monaghan's making 16 to 18 million, Fincham was making over 20, you know, that, that bureaucracy that is Ponder Vidra is going to be under assault because they're going to see money going there when it should be going to them. It's, you know, and just what you're saying right now is, everything wrong about what's going on. People want to watch golf. Yeah. They yeah. don't give a shit about who's making what. You guys have already got your private airplanes. You've got your big houses in three different cities. You've got all of this. What the hell are you guys doing? We just want to watch golf. We want to sit. We want to look at Pebble Beach. We want to see the ocean. Well, and quit doing all the political bullshit. And here's what it's going to come down to. Here's what it's going to come to. The only way this thing exists there is going to be a merger of some kind between 
Live, and the PGA Tour. There's going to be eight to ten tournaments worldwide that both tours play together. Those are going to be for probably $30 million. You've got to get in the top 75 on the world golf rankings. P, the P, uh, time out. I don't want to hear world golf rankings. The, the <laughs> world golf rankings, the only way to take the seven voting members of the world of the OWGR and put it together, do these tournaments, you go back, everybody gets a ranking, whatever the system, I don't give a shit what it is, and you figure out who the 75 best players in the world of all the leagues and put them, put them 10 times eight to 10 times a year, then the four majors, and they go back and play in their individual tours and they gain points to try to get in the top 75. And then you've got continuity. You've got, you've got a marketing situation where you can take the best players in the world and see how they go against each other. Right now, we've fractionalized it. They're all going different directions. We're not gonna see Rom. We're not gonna see playing speed or Scotty Shuffler. We're not gonna see any of that. Eight to ten times a year, it's going to be it's going to be one of the great Ryder Cup deals of all time because <laughs> one side hates yeah. the other side. I think marketing wise and television wise, I I got to get a team together and and do a television package. And go, we, I, I want those I want those tournaments. That's going to be the it's going to be worldwide. Package. Yeah, that'll that'll be it. That's that's the only place it can go. We can't fractionalize the talent that's out there because, as you know, there's only one guy that ever moved the needle a little bit. To give you an idea, last week at San Diego, okay, they got a one rating on a Sunday. Peter, a one rating. Yeah. It, when we were doing television, technically it was a it was, Saturday, but still it was. Like it was a Saturday yeah. the last day. Okay. We got a, we got, we would get on Sunday. We'd get two, two to two, six yeah. around in there, and there's especially that event because it, it was Tiger was there all the time, yeah. and yeah, and it was good. Yeah. But they got a one, and that, and the conference championships got fifty million. Over fifty million. Both, so there, there yeah, is a, 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 a championship huge Sunday NFL. gap between who you are and who you perceive you are to get money to the guys that really get the money. Okay, and yeah. we're trying to get up to that level. There, we have no products See, at this point. And this, this is where Monahan screwed the players a second time, because to your point, initially the players on the PGA Tour played for trophies, they played for history, they played for their legacy, they played for major championships, and, and they were the virtuous ones, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everybody else, they were assholes chasing the money. Okay. Now, he, he makes the deal, or tries to make the deal with, with Piff. And now, he's coming back around, and he's trying to keep his players by using money the elevated events mm -hmm. and everything else. And now the public's per perception of what's going on is these guys really aren't playing for trophies. They really aren't playing for legacy. They're playing for money. They're money-grubbing players just like the other ones. They're no different. And so Monaghan's throwing the players under the bus a second time by making people realize that, you know what, the only way they're going to stay is if I give them more money. They're money-hungry. And, and you, you yeah. can't keep your players happy if you keep throwing them under the bus. It's not possible. And you can't outbid the other side. No. You no. can't get close. Actually, to your point about the, the pissing side. contest, when, when is this going to end? A friend of ours texted us this morning and he said, when is this going to end? I said, well, it's a full-blown pissing contest right now and in either Jay or Yasser is going to run out of piss and I don't think it's going to be Yasser. Not going to be the 700 billion. Not be no. Both of you, yeah. collectively, two of you, name me the top five players on the official world golf rankings right now. The top five? Top five. Okay, well, freaking Rom's out. Scheffler. Well, no, Rom's still, still in there. Scheffler's first. Rory's, Rory. what, fourth? Um, I think Wyndham Clark's like fifth. We got, no, I don't think he's in the top five. This is um, what's going to happen. Yeah, no ne one knows. Neither of you know no. who the top, neither, neither do I. No, I'm, not, no. I'm not throwing you guys under the no, bus. No, I know. I'm just saying. I, do you know? To yeah. your point Sheffler's about nobody won. moving the needle. We know Scheffler's one. We and can't even Rory can get to number one this week if he wins, but he can't. Victor Hovland's top five. The, yeah, Victor Hovland. Max Homa. Okay. Victor. He might be. Anyway, th there's your problem. We have, we're trying to sell this sport, and we have really no one that, People passionately want to tune in and watch. They don't want to do it. I mean, Tiger was it, okay? That's a once in millennial or millennia situation. And okay, he did it. Now, we're trying to put these guys in. We get some good players, and all of a sudden, 
the live tours got all the guys, they got all the pirates. They got all the guys that, that are mouthy, they got all the guys that had background stories, yeah. everything else. And if you, if you look at our tour now, it's very vanilla, uh, nice guys, really good guys, but there's nothing, we have no John Daly's. We have no total idiots out there <laughs> having fun, smoking cigarettes, and hitting a 340. We don't have those guys. Uh, they're all in the gym doing their deals. So we need we got we got a product here. We're trying to sell, but you tell me what the product is. It's the it's a PGA tour. What is it? It was it's fractionalized. It was now. players of high moral standards who were playing for trophies and legacy and history. And that's gone by the boards. That's that's that doesn't exist anymore. So now everybody's playing for money. Let's get that out on the table. And now let's let's get us a solution of some sort. And co-commissioners uh, Costas and McCord, let's just get the best players in the world together 10 times, maybe. I, I don't think it's that difficult. I really doesn't don't. Like it. it doesn't you, seem you, you like You shorten it. the PGA Both Tour. Both would want to do that. You, you shorten the PGA Tour, whatever. They will. They'll March, shorten it. March to August. Mm -hmm. Then you go and you, and you run the, the live tournaments, the teams. You have auctions. You make it. You make it worldwide. You have auctions for players. You form teams each year, mm -hmm. uh, gambling, betting, and they play for twelve weeks, whatever. And then you got the Corn Ferry Tour. Let them play January, February, and get it done. I mean, it, it it doesn't seem that difficult, other than the fact that the PGA Tour wants to maintain its monopoly on golf. That's the stumbling block. When I was on the board a hundred years ago. 110. 110 years ago. <laughs> our, our leader at that point said, we were talking about that, about the tour, how many tournaments are we gonna play in? And I, I, I'm guessing at that point it was 30 something, 32, 33. And I remember in a board meeting he stood up and he goes, guys, here's the deal, listen to me closely. He said, we have gotta occupy every week of the year because as soon as we leave one vacant, someone's gonna come in and throw a tournament with our players and they're gonna, they're gonna sell real estate, which they did. That was yeah. the tour model at that point, 100 years ago when I was there, was the fact that these developers would come in with their real estate golf course and they'd sign a three year deal, yeah. okay? Yeah. And you go in, they'd, you got national television on your golf course, on your development. They get in for three years for hardly anything, <laughs> sell it out, and then they'd always leave. And that's when our commissioner at that point went, okay, enough of that. Well, you, enough that, of we that. were a part of that because if you remember in the, in the mid 90s, CBS lost the NFL contract mm -hmm. to Fox. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever thought that would happen, it mm -hmm. happened. And so what did we end up doing? We did all this, what they call the silly season golf mm -hmm. events, and they came up with them, whether it was the shark shootout or the whatever, and, and we had all these silly season events, and then the commissioner says, whoa, okay, there's a market for this stuff, it needs to be under the tour umbrella, we can't let that person make money and, and not us, exactly. these are our players, and, and that's where the, the whole 46 weeks a year you know, was born. Yeah. Well, I, I, I will tell you this, I love golf. I mean, golf has been my life professionally, especially, but also personally, for a very long time. And I am about fed up to here with all this bullshit and this whole thing. I mean, I just, I've had it, right? I mean, I want to talk I, about I'm going to become, golf again. I, 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 great. I'm, right? I'm a, yeah. I view myself, since we left CBS, I view myself as a, as a viewer advocate for the viewers at home to get the best quality TV production that they could have. So they enjoy watching golf, so they want to go out and play golf more by, by watching a, an exciting tournament. They want to go see a tournament more. And we're not talking about golf anymore. Golf is, is like fifth on the list, and, and I've had it. That's I, optimistic. I, I, I just, I'm done. That's it. You're done. So we're not talking about this anymore. So for me, I think these two would be the perfect commissioners of worldwide golf. If you agree, <laughs> Write it in the Keep comments drinking. below. Keep drinking. We all want to see <laughs> we all want to see more golf, better golf, the best players in the world. Don't go away. Costas and McCord off the rockers. We'll be right back. We've got a great lesson from Coach Costas, and we've got a little insight into the coolest thing, the PGA show. It's where all the world of golf meets on Costas and McCord off their rockers. We'll be right back. Strokes gain stats are finally easy with the most five-star rated golf app in the country. 
Swing U accurately and objectively provides feedback across driving, approach shots, chipping and pitching, bunker play, and putting. Easily identify your strengths and weaknesses and laser focus your practice time so you can quickly shave strokes off your score. Download Swing U and start owning your game today. Imagine a putter that will actually transform your game. Introducing Lab Golf Putters. The revealer shows how the lab keeps the putter face square through impact unlike any other putter. Lab is the hottest putter in professional golf with multiple global victories in 2023, including the PGA Tour. Lab breaks the mold with better science so you can stop struggling with your putting. Elevate your game, simplify your putting, and untorque yourself. Visit labgolf.com to discover how lab putters are remaking the game. Visit our website, casasmacore.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel or podcast, and follow us on social media at Casas McCord Off Their Rockers. Now it's time for Coach Costas. Peter gives us some great tips to help our games. Golf is all about the ability to control the movement of your body and match it up with the movement of your hands and arms. To do that, you have to be able to control what I call your center of gravity. Now it's basically a spot about four inches below your belly button right in the middle of your body. If you visualize a tennis ball, baseball, softball, whatever in the middle there, what we'd like to do when we start making our golf swing, we don't want this thing sliding high and up there and then going down low and coming back up. We certainly don't want it coming high and going laterally on the forward swing. We'd like to turn around that and around that from takeaway to impact. Now there's going to be a little bit of lateral movement in there, but we want to minimize it. So I have a drill called the penguin drill that I love to do because it allows me the opportunity to get a sense of is my center of gravity rising and lowering? Is it sliding back and forth or am I just rotating? So what I do, I will set up to the golf ball, put my heels together, toes out, hence the name penguin drill and I get my knees out. So my knees are pretty much normal width apart. Now from here, I want to learn to cock the hands and turn the body, drop, rotate, stay flat footed, and learn what it's like to keep your center of gravity in a stationary rotary position. You'll feel the ability of your hips to rotate better You'll feel your head staying quieter. And eventually you can go to bigger swings. And you'll get the feeling of a lot more pressure on your right leg. You know, a lot is made of the sneed squat in, in golf instruction, where Sam used to get up here and then he would get out here and you'd almost look like he squatted with his knees. He wasn't so much squatting with his knees as he was keeping pressure in the right thigh and the right knee. That's what you get with the penguin drill. It forces you to stay back here and rotate around. You can't slide because you'll come off your heel too soon. So the key to getting the lower body working correctly to support the rotation of your center of gravity is keeping pressure in the right leg longer in the downswing. Penguin drill, hinge it, drop and rotate. You'll feel a lot more pressure on the inside of your right leg. Take that pressure, apply it in your regular golf swing. It'll help you be more consistent. Stick around, more Costas and McCord off their rockers in just a minute. Imagine a putter that will actually transform your game. Introducing Lab Golf Putters. The revealer shows how the lab keeps the putter face square through impact unlike any other putter. Lab is the hottest putter in professional golf with multiple global victories in 2023, including the PGA Tour. Lab breaks the mold with better science so you can stop struggling with your putting. Elevate your game, simplify your putting, and untorque yourself. Visit labgolf.com to discover how lab putters are remaking the game. Ono's Pit Barbecue, an authentic Southern Pit Barbecue experience you won't forget. At Bono's, you'll find a genuine down-home pit barbecue experience, the whole experience. 
Our entire menu is smoked and prepared in-house from our mouth-watering smoked meats to our delicious sides made from scratch. Our smoker is always smoking and everything to order, no shortcuts. With 20 locations across the country, from the sunshine state of Florida to the Rocky Mountains, Bono's culture is unmistakable at each of our restaurants. We offer incredible opportunities for franchisees. To find out more, visit our website, bonosbarbecue.com slash franchise. And remember, if you don't have a pit, it ain't legit. Visit our website, costasmacord.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel or podcast and follow us on social media at Costas McCord Off Their Rockers. Now let's get back to Costas and McCord Off Their Rockers with Peter and Gary. Welcome back. Costas and McCord Off Their Rockers. Peter, and, on, and on a stool. And on a stool now. I wish I could rock a little bit. Uh, speaking of rocking, we just had the uh, the big show, the big PGA yeah. merchandise show in Orlando, um, where I had 10 million 500,000 square feet of, <laughs> of space that every gadget in the world, every golf related deal. It's, it's quite, a, quite a picnic if you go there. I've been once and I was claustrophobic. People just bouncing off you and everything else. And that's the only time I've gone. Have you been back to the thing? Okay. This... In our in our retirement state, right? You, you you think back to stuff that's happened to you. I am so freaking old. I went to one of the first PGA shows. Well, 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 it wasn't even called a PGA show. It was in Palm Beach Gardens. A guy named Ernie Saberak, who who was a uh, Hall of Famer in terms of sale, selling golf stuff, right? It was in a field in Palm Beach Gardens. And the vendors came. He got them all together. They drove up with their cars, unpacked the trunks, the trunks and, and they put up a table. It, it's like a flea market. How, what, what year? 71, 72, wow. 71. Yeah. And, so, and, and then it was dusty as all hell, whatever. And then all of a sudden, you know, South Florida in, in the wintertime, yeah. boom, thunderstorms. Yeah. And then everybody, everybody gets, scrambled everybody gets, gets, gets put the trunk out. down again. So eventually they figured out, you know, if we're going to do this, we better do it inside. Huh. And, and so it's, it, and to see what it's grown to today is, is absolutely phenomenal. But, you know, it, you're right. I used to love going to see all the mom and pop operations where they would come up with teaching aids or, you know, different kinds of teas or different kinds of whatevers. <laughs> well, we want to give you a little peek of what exactly happened at the PGA merchandise show. But Peter and I, eh, not going, being elderly, uh, we were going to go. We're going to send the younger guy, not much younger, um, but he's the producer and director. We can basically tell him what to do. Yeah. Mike, where are you? Am I in heaven? For a golfer, yes, this is heaven. It's the PGA Show 2024 Orlando, Florida at the Orange County Convention Center. Over one million square feet of everything golf. We're here give you a little insight into what's going to be the newest, latest, and greatest thing you're going to need in the world of golf. Everything from the latest Callaway AI Smoke Driver to the new Vokey Wedges to incredible tech that can help your game, the new Foresight Quad Max. Every little item of apparel, shoes, golf carts, food, drinks, it's all here in Orlando. I'm here at the Foresight Sports booth with Tim Gillis of Foresight Sports. We know we love the Quad Pro, the GC3. Peter's got one in his man cave, but they got something new. They said it's better. They said it's the best. Tim, what do you got here? What's new in launch monitors? Mike, it's the year of the GC Quad Max. So what we've done is we've taken the GC Quad, yep. which is the industry standard for launch monitors. Number one on the PGA Tour. Number one on the PGA Tour, number one amongst the club manufacturers, just about anybody and everybody. Sure. And what we've done is we've added features to it that do a bunch of different things that people have been clamoring for. We're able Let's to customize it. the screen. Okay. It's now a touch screen instead of a push button screen. Oh. Okay. So it makes it a lot easier to navigate, a lot gotcha. easier to do things. Great. One of the uh, fantastic functions of the new GC Quad Max is speed training. So you can program it and say, I am learning to swing the club faster, 
and there's a unit in here that helps the teacher get you to swing your golf club faster and helps you train. We all want to swing faster. Oh God, yeah. McCord, it's go faster. McCord needs to swing faster. <laughs> yeah. Casas is Peter's pretty good. can't help him anymore. <laughs> Peter can do it. Gary needs yeah. a little more speed. Well, that's what Peter should teach him then, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, those are the key features to it. If you're a club builder or you're doing club fittings, there's some features in it that allow you to customize the screen to show your customers what is going on, or if there's some information that you want them not to see, you can hide that information. Oh. So if you have somebody that's really a, a, a questionable person and wants to waste your time asking you a bunch of okay. bad questions, you can take that information off of there and avoid that. All right. Uh, so a it, it really helps. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't want to be derogatory. Mark. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but those are the main features. It's a little bit lighter. It's got a newer case to it. It's got a battery that lasts. 30% longer. Looks great. And it's it, it's going to take How long does that battery last? 9 to 10 hours. That's a lot of that's a that's, lot of balls. If you're yeah, if you're teaching that long in the range, you're going to sleep well that night for sure. So speed training, easier to use, more functionality, touch screen instead touch of push screen. button, lighter, longer battery. Tell us just real quick, run down all the features that the Quad Max what can it do? What does it measure for you? It measures all your golf ball information. So it's going to show your launch angle, yep. your ball speed, yep. what we call curvature or the equator of the ball. We're the only ones that can see the equator. And what that does is it refines how much that ball curves right to left or left to right. Okay. We're also going to show you your peak angle, your, I'm sorry, your peak height, your descent angle, your club impact point, and all the different facilities that people need to get improvement or fitting in, in instruction. So whatever you use it for, if you're a teacher, if you're a player that wants to get better, learn from what your ball is doing, and not guess, actually know. Actually measure, yeah. We yep. actually take pictures of everything, including the club face, and nobody else does that. A lot of people use predictability models to see some of that data, but we're the only ones that independently measure the golf ball and the golf club and give you that feedback on a consistent and accurate basis. Foresight Sports on the cutting edge of golf technology and helping teachers, golfers, no more and play better than anyone else. I've run into an old friend, open champion, Ryder Cup hero, and a phenomenal announcer besides being a great golfer. Now, trying to do a PGA Champions Tour, try to make his way out there. Justin Leonard, Justin, great to see you again. Thank you, you too. Justin and I, I produced a golf tournament with ESPN that Justin uh, played in with Tom Kite, lost in a playoff to yep. Steve Payton, Craig Stout back in 1995. Yep. It's quite an event. We had a, a, a great time and one of the best stars, do you remember it? We, we were about six miles from the U.S. military base and to go over there to sign autographs for the soldiers, yep. uh, the general said, you guys don't want to, you guys don't want to drive over during rush hour on a Friday night, so. Right. So, you know, in the middle of Seoul, Korea, put us on two Black Hawk helicopters, took off from the golf course, landed at the base. Amazing. Um, I, I remember the 18th fairway was some kind of uphill par four dog leg right, and over to the left was a very small training base oh, for the right. South yeah. Korean military. Yes. And I look over there, we're playing a golf tournament, and 40 yards from me, is a, a young member of the South Korean military army crawling through the bushes and there's a guy with a parachute and a fan strapped to his back flying around as an observer, no I way. guess trying to spot this guy or something. I don't <laughs> know what was going on, but holy cow, I was in Seoul, Korea. I had no idea what was going on, but it was really a fun trip. It was a great event. And in fact, on the helicopter, uh, Tom Kite was next to me. We had helmets on and calm units, and Steve Pate was right here, and he, he's drinking a Bud Light. And the young soldier <laughs> says, uh, "Mr. Pate, sir, you can't drink on the on the helicopter." And so Pate goes, finishes it. I hand Steve a sharpie, and he signs it and gives the empty Bud Light can to the kid. But a lot of fun. But we're here at the Golf Forever booth. Yep. You're an endorser. You use Golf Forever. And uh, I got to try it yesterday. I, in 10 minutes, I felt like I had an unbelievable workout. Yep. What does Golf Forever, what has it shown you about your swing and your game that's most important? Does it help most with speed, 
endurance or flexibility? What do you think does the best and how does that help your game? I, I think it really helps all three. Um, you know, I, I've been able to, from my time with the PG Tour, had access to like the best trainers in the world right. when it comes to the game of golf. And now with Golf Forever through Dr. Jeremy James, the founder, you know, we're able to provide that same level of training to anybody who's willing to put a little money into their golf game yep. and invest some time. The cool thing is it's totally mobile. I, I travel with our swing trainer, I throw it in my golf bag. Um, you know, the, the workouts are all on your phone. You go through this program and everything is tailor-made for the individual. Um, and then, you know, now that we've got guys like Zach Johnson and Ryan Palmer, world number one, Scotty Scheffler, Scotty Scheffler yeah. using our program, wow. using the swing trainer. I mean, I'm, I'm more than just an endorser. Like I, I'm, you know, I'm an investor, a contributor. I was in from day one and to see the scale of where we are now compared to where we were five or six years ago, um, it's been incredible. It's been a, a fun adventure. So as good as it is for your game and tour pros, best players in the world, yep. I got to imagine some of the testimonials that you've been getting from average golfers, regular golfers, it's got to help dramatically for someone like me who's trying not to lose distance as we get older. It, it, it does. And, you know, players our age mm -hmm. tend to lose flexibility. They lose distance yeah. through, you know, we're able to defeat time or at least challenge it quite a bit with Golf Forever. And that, like now at, at 51 years old, I'm hitting the ball further than I ever have in the course of my career. And I know technology plays a part in that, sure. but it's not just driver. Like I'm hitting my eight, nine iron 10 yards further than I was 10 or 15 years ago. And there's maybe a little bit of golf ball. It's the same irons I've used, the same loss really? and everything. Wow. But it's just, I think from very specific and focused training, um, I'm able to hit the ball further. And I think everybody should be able to. Yeah, that's great. Justin's made available a couple of Golf Forever units for you, Peter and Gary. We're gonna bring them back, we're gonna work on them together, get stronger, get more flexible, and maybe hit it a little bit farther, Justin, appreciate it. Of course. Thanks, so good luck out there. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks so much for watching today's episode of Costas and McCord Off Their Rockers. Again, trying to bring a little common sense and clarity into the world of golf. We all wanna see the best players in the world playing golf. We all want to talk about golf and not about this business that's going on. We appreciate your support. Give some comments below. Any thoughts that you have, the guys love reading them. And remember to support our great sponsors, SwingU and the amazing SwingU app, the best app in golf. Go to SwingU.com and use promo code ROCKERS2024 to get 40% off your first year of SwingU Plus or Pro. Foresight Sports and their Quad Pro and Quad Max launch monitor, number one on the PGA Tour, incredible technology, as well as their simulators, which are cutting edge. Lab Golf and their game-changing technology with the tour-winning Lab Golf putters. Check out labgolf.com for more information. And Bono's Barbecue with smoked meat, sauces, and an incredible franchise opportunity. Check it out at bonosbarbecue.com slash franchise. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and hit that notification button right below so you don't miss an upcoming episode of Costas and McCord Off Their Rockers. We've got some great ones coming up in 2024. So until next time, Mike Abram, the third wheel in this crazy group of Costas and McCord Off Their Rockers. We'll see you again real soon. <laughs>